January is a time of reflection and goal setting as we assess how the previous year went and see how we want to approach the year of 2024. What worked in 2023? What didn't? What do we want more of? And what do we want less of? And how do we want to step into this new year? But when we think about New Year, January, we think a lot about New Year's resolutions in addition to goal setting. And a lot of those classic resolutions tend to revolve around life and health stuff, all in the interest of feeling better in the next year, whether it's losing weight or maybe traveling, eating healthy, getting in a relationship, getting out of a relationship, right? But today's episode is going to focus around goal setting when it comes to our plants, because if you are in a rhythm with your plants, If you are actively showing up to your hobby and love of plants, I'm going to bet that it is going to help you feel better. Caring for plants, as we all know, is an amazing way to grow joy in your life. So let's carve out 30 minutes in this episode to sit and think about how we want to show up to this hobby in the best way to create the most joy for ourselves, the most calm, the most nervous system regulation for ourselves in 2024 going to be a little bit of a personal episode. I'm going to share with you my three goals that I have for 2024. We're also going to go over goals that the entire community has set as I've heard from a few of you. But most importantly, I'm going to give you a framework where you can walk through your own goal setting to explore how you want to get the most out of 2024 when it comes to your plants. So welcome. Welcome to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast, where we not only learn how to care for plants successfully, but how to simply and affordably use our plant babies to cultivate more joy in our lives by doing so. I'm Maria, former plant killer turned happy plant lady, author of Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, speaker, podcaster, and most importantly, your new best plant friend. On Growing Joy with Plants, you'll find conversations about houseplant care, gardening tutorials, and wellness through the lens of plants. Hello, my plant friends. Welcome back to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast. Welcome back. If you're a repeating listener, happy new year. So happy that you're joining me in 2024 as you've been with me in 2023 and the years before it. If you're a new listener, welcome to the Growing Joy with Plants podcast. I'm Maria. I'm going to be your new best plant friend. I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy in your life while doing so. And I'm so excited to kick the year off with you. I hope you enjoyed our new Growing Joy with Plants intro. I like to do something different at the beginning of every year for the podcast. You know, our seasons are yearly. And so I worked with my high school friend, Daniel Limon. He's a composer. I went to his recording studio. If you follow me on Instagram, you know, and we kind of reimagined the existing Growing Joy with Plants theme song. That's my voice. I'm singing. If you don't know, I used to be a professional musical theater performer, a professional singer. But anyway, I hope you liked it. Our goal for it was if you're laying in the grass, looking at the clouds, like that was the vibe that we wanted for it. And you're going to listen and hear a bunch of really cute little, little sprinkles of this new music throughout this episode and the episodes to come in 2024. So goal setting 2024. You're not newbies to this. I know we've all talked about New Year's resolutions. I'm going to walk you through a framework to set your own goals and assess what you want to do in 2024 in your garden. I'm also going to share my goals that I've put together. But before that, I wanted to celebrate our community. Last week, I posted on Instagram about asking our community, what goals do you have for 2024? And I wanted to read a couple of comments that we got. Hold on, I'm pulling up my Instagram. If you guys don't follow me, I'm Growing Joy with Maria on Instagram. Okay, so here are some comments from listeners in our community on when I asked what goals do they have for their houseplants or garden in 2024? This is what they say. Lily Elias says, my goal is to get around to repotting all of my houseplants that desperately need new homes. I love that, Lily. (laughs) That's quick. That's simple. That's one goal that is super achievable. You can knock that out in one sitting. And also, I love the idea that you want to like give your plants some TLC. Plant Solstice says that her goal is transitioning as many plants as possible to clear nursery pots, hoping to better monitor plant health and moisture in the substrate and plan to attend more plant events with friends. You're going to learn making plant friends is one of my goals for the year. But I love this as this clearly shows that this follower Plant Solstice, she has noticed that she struggles with soil moisture and she thinks by putting everything in clear pots, she's going to be able to more effectively care for her plants successfully. And that comes from this reflection that we're going to go through 
in a few minutes. So I love that for you. Infinite Succulent, she's a friend of our podcast. She's been on the show before on episodes on plant magics, but she says for houseplants, she wants to propagate and gift more plants and trim, prune, and repot more. So she wants to spend more intentional time with her houseplants. And in her garden, she wants to grow more food and harvest and process more herbs. So she's a plant witch. That was our episode on how to be a green witch. And I know she processes and drives herbs for a lot of her rituals. So I love that for her. Jess Barrett Finn wants to make an actionable plan for caring for her houseplants and start growing something outside. I love this. You know, I think houseplants are the entryway to outdoor gardening and getting into nature more. So she's got her houseplants. She's keeping them alive. She wants to create a more sustainable way to care for them. But in addition, she wants to take that next step into growing something outside. I love that for her. We'll stop there, but I love these answers from the listeners. And if you guys ever want to share your goals for 2024 after we go through this framework, you're welcome to go to my Instagram, Growing Joy with Maria, and comment on the posts for this podcast and share your goals with me. Okay, so before I walk you through what my goals are, I want to talk about the framework for how you could go set your own goals, reflect and set your own goals. Listening to the episode that I released just before this on the plant audit will be really helpful and really inform you to kind of take the next step with setting your goals. But last month's episode was doing a plant audit, which is very reflective of kind of assessing what plants in your space were doing well, what weren't, what worked for you, what didn't, and specifically removing plants from your space. This is going to kind of expand on that. But I highly recommend if you didn't already listen to that episode, go back and listen to it after this as kind of companion listening, if you want to go through and set your own goals. So when thinking about 2024, we can't just move into 2024 without reflecting on 2023, right? It was a good year for some of us. It was a bad year for some of us. It was highs and lows for a lot of us in our personal lives and also with our plant collections. So before you even think about what you want in 2024, I think it's really important to number one, just take a good look at your plants and or your garden and reflect on how 2023 went. Did you acquire a lot of plants, right? Did your plant collection grow? Did your plant collection diminish because you killed a lot of plants? In my plant audit episode, I shared about, I killed a lot of plants last year, right? And that is going to inform decisions that I make in this year. You know, how many plants died? How many plants thrived? Is there a subsect of your plants that really thrived? Like maybe you really nailed succulents this year, but your ferns weren't very happy. Overall, you want to really think about in 2023, when I think about my gardening hobby or when I think about my houseplant hobby, what brought me joy, right? Growing joy with plants. We are doing this to make ourselves happier. We should not be caring for plants to make ourselves bummed out, right? So what aspects of my plant care routine brought me joy? And then obviously what didn't? So you're going to realize what you need to prune away and then what you want to focus on. So now we look to the second part of the framework, which is setting goals for 2024. So if you realize that, you know, like I said, succulents really brought you joy. Maybe this year you want to double down on succulents. Maybe you want to double down on figuring out your own succulent potting mix because that would be really fun. Maybe you want to invest in some grow lights to set up, you know, your succulents up for success or be able to grow your collection. I think too, like you have to look at your real life, like your <laughs> what your actual life looks like. Have you taken on a new job? Have you moved? Is life changing? Do you want to continue as business as usual with your plant care? Do you want to take on more responsibility and kind of more hours, quote unquote, of plant care for yourself by maybe doubling down on the hobby? If you're moving into a busy season of life, do you maybe need to scale back and just figure out how you can continue approaching plant care with less amount of time than you had in 2023, right? But it's just like taking a look at 2024. What's 2024 going to look like for you as a person? And then how do your plants fit into that? And I think with goals in 2024, it's really important to not just think about plants. Like I want to get really into alocasia this year. I want to get really into succulents this year. Like I mentioned, it's also about what activities are like what really is going to fuel you. So you know, I want to shout out the NYC plant friends group, you know, I see them on Instagram all the time getting together and doing all of these fun planty explorations, like maybe your favorite aspect of your plant care, your plant hobby is making new plant friends like that listener said, right, plant solstice said in who already commented her goal. Maybe it's that you really like being curious and that you really like learning. So maybe you're going to get a couple of books and learn about a new potting technique or learn about a new growing technique, right? Maybe it is that you're really curious about a specific genus of plants that you want to continue to acquire and cultivate. But it doesn't just need to be about the plants. It could be about, wow, 
what do plants make me feel? Plants make me feel curious and that makes me feel good. Plants make me feel nurturing and that makes me feel good. Figure out what actually about the plant care makes you feel good and then figure out how you can double down on it. And then I would say ideally write them down. You can write them down in your journal. You could put them on your fridge. Maybe you put them on one of your plant pots or you could, like I said, go onto Instagram and write them on a post for this podcast just as accountability for yourself so that you can go back and look look to those goals because how many of us set goals in January and then come April, we've already forgotten about them, right? So I think the other key to this goal setting idea is not only am I deciding like, yeah, what would I love? I'd love to build my plant collection to 200 plants. But is this a sustainable idea for what you've got going on in 2024? How can you make sure that these goals are realistic for 2024? And how can you make sure that these goals are actually going to be so much fun for you in 2024 and not completely overwhelm you? So that's kind of the framework for goal setting, at least from what I used. And now I want to walk you through my top three goals for my houseplants and garden this year and why they are the way they are based on some life stuff that I have going on. So plant friends, we are moving. I feel like I've hinted on this on the podcast. Billy and I are still living in a rental. So we are moving south. I can't say where yet because at the time that I'm recording this podcast episode, We actually don't know exactly where we're moving yet, but we know that we're moving to one of two southern cities. We're so excited. I'm so excited to get out of the woods. My time in the woods has come to a close. I feel really good about it. I am so thankful for living as rural and as isolated as I have for the last three years. It's been a beautiful little honeymoon for me and my husband, but we are so ready to come back into civilization and be closer to people and things and just step into this new chapter of our life. So We're moving and we're moving south. So I'm going to be moving into an entirely new growing, an entirely new gardening zone, like entirely new. My whole life, I have lived in New York. I only know garden zone five and six, right? I don't know any other life (laughs) than this. Where we are moving, it's going to be much warmer. The gardening season is going to be much longer. And even the vegetation is very different. So I'm going to be working as a complete novice again after I've built up a little bit of expertise after the last seven years of gardening and and leading this podcast. So it's going to be a really exciting year of a new home, a new climate, new opportunities, new plant friends, you know, it's going to be fabulous. And I'm so excited to tell you guys more when we finally get our shit together. (laughs) And frankly, I had already set a bunch of goals thinking that we were going to stay in New York. And the goals that I had set for staying in New York do not equate to the goals that I have set for now that we are moving because life has changed. And so your goals have to adjust. So also, I just like offer that to you guys that you can set goals and then set different goals. You can change your mind about goals. Like it's all good. You just have to stay related to yourself and you just have to stay present and understanding what actually is possible and what isn't, which I can go into a little bit more. So Before we knew that we were moving, I think one of my big goals this year was to like double down with my garden next year, this summer and like really go ham and probably do some raised beds and do some in-ground gardening stuff. Now that I'm moving, like that goal is out the window. There's no way that's happening. So now I'm trying to view 2024 as an R&D year for me, research and development year for me as a gardener. There are going to be no finished products with me this year. This is going to be a learning year, an experimentation year, a year of curiosity, a year of figuring stuff out, right? Figuring out, are my sunflowers going to grow the same way that they do in the South as they grow in the North, which the answer is no. (laughs) So I really know that my first goal is to trust that I just have to put one foot in front of the other. This is an R&D year. We're putting one foot in front of the other. We're going to try a bunch of stuff. Some of it's going to work and some of it isn't. I'm probably going to kill plants this year because I'm going to try plants and fail at them. But I'm going to fail joyfully at them because it's all about me just like learning this new climate that I'm in, right? So, you know, if you listened to the plant audit episode, which I recorded before I knew we were moving, (laughs) I was all about I killed a lot of plants in 2023. I don't want to kill as many plants in 2024. I've already let that go, right? I'm going to have to move my entire plant collection on a big move down south. I don't know if all my plants are going to make it. I've got to make peace with that. And I've got to just commit to putting one foot in front of the other and just joyfully expanding and growing in this different direction that me and my husband are taking. And also committing to as I put one foot in front of the other, I just like do it with joy and grace for myself and ease and like not stress about it. 
I feel like I've stressed about stuff so much when it's like my first time. I remember when I moved to the woods the first time I put so much pressure on myself that first gardening season to like do it all perfectly. I'm not doing that this year. I'm going to try my best to take it slow and just do a small garden this year, like basically a test garden to figure out like what grows well and what doesn't. Around the world and specifically in classical music where I got my undergrad degree, The pitch of A is known to be centering and recalibrating. When I was researching stress relief and joy inspiration for my book, I was amazed at the impact that sound can have on our nervous systems. So no wonder I've been so in love with my Wind River wind chimes. And now I'm so excited to announce the launch of their meditation chimes, designed specifically to enrich your meditation or prayer practices indoors. The Wind River meditation chime, it comes in two sizes, are tuned to A, matching the longest and shortest tubes of their very popular Corinthian Bells 50. Those are the ones that I have and I can't stop talking about on this podcast. Each meditation chime is secured with a simple but elegant wooden base made out of oak, which has a mallet. It would look beautiful on a desk or on a bookshelf. With just one strike of the chime, the tones ring out for over a minute, giving you an opportunity to drop into the present with a big delicious breath to quiet your mind. Sound is a critical sensory experience, and for over 30 years, Wind River Chimes has been committed to inspiring the world with sounds that heal through their beauty and purity. Now you can experience the signature Wind River tone easily and meaningfully indoors. Enhance your yoga or spiritual spaces and ignite your meditation or devotional practice with the lasting inspiration of the Wind River Meditation Chime. Or you can grab yourself one of their famous wind chimes. I have two of them on either side of my house, and I'm completely obsessed. If you listen to this podcast, you know. And you can use code GROWINGJOY at windriverchimes.com to get a free engraving on any engravable wind chime to add a special element to your gift. So head on over to windriverchimes.com and use code GROWINGJOY at checkout. Plant friend, if you're looking for a gardening book to add to your collection, think about snagging the new Gardening Know-How's Book of Vegetable Gardening. It is an all-encompassing guide to growing your own food filled with creative tips and practical advice from the editors of the world's most visited gardening website, gardeningknowhow.com. You've probably heard about them by now, Gardening Know How, and their experts have put together this indispensable handbook for vegetable gardeners, including not only the essential information that you need to succeed, but also a wealth of expert tips and real world advice to smooth the many inevitable bumps on the road to a productive edible garden. Gardening Know How, the complete guide to vegetable gardening has the answer to your veggie growing questions from asparagus planting to zucchini pest control and everything in between. There's detailed plant profiles with specific cultivation information and unique growing tips for each vegetable crop, allowing you to pick and choose which crops to grow based on your climate and personal preference. Pick it up at your favorite local bookstore, bookshop.org, Barnes & Noble, or amazon.com. That's Gardening Know How, the complete guide to vegetable gardening wherever books are sold. Gardening Know-How, The Complete Guide to Vegetable Gardening. Now, my next goal is to make new plant friends because growing in my new climate is going to be so much easier if I make new plant friends in my new climate. So obviously, I have a lot of plant friends. I have all of you plant friends that listen to the podcast, but I'm so excited to make some new plant friends in the new town that we're moving to, walk around my neighborhood, see what's growing really well for my neighbors, join a local garden society, join in a local garden club, make friends with the plant ladies or, you know, the plantsmen in my area, ask them what's working for them, what they would suggest me growing and try and really use this as an opportunity to connect with some new people and ask for help because learning to ask for help is a skill in itself. I'm also planning on joining like local plant Facebook groups in my area to try and see like get a feel for who might be cool to hang out with or go on a plant shopping date with. And then also in the first month, one of my like mini goals in the first month is to at least try and figure out what the best plant shops in the area are, what the best garden centers in the area are, hit them up, see if they have events that I could maybe go to to meet some new plant people and try and get involved in on all of their email lists. So I can be aware of like plant community stuff that's going on. So goal number one, one foot in front of the other. This is my R&D year. Goal number two, make new plant friends. And also, I guess I want to make more plant friends on this podcast too. So if you have a plant friend that doesn't listen to this podcast, please share it with them. I would love for them to join our digital community. So my next goal is going to be to figure out sustainable routines. And I had a listener write me about this. Like, how do you create a sustainable routine that doesn't get you overwhelmed six months in? 
I have multiple chapters in my book, Growing Joy, The Plant Lover's Guide to Cultivating Happiness, all about how to create plant care routines that are also mindfulness routines, which I highly suggest you guys all reading. But I feel like in the last couple of years, just because of how much we've moved, I've really oscillated between being a low maintenance plant parent, where I can only have like philodendrons and snake plants, like stuff that's really low maintenance, because I've got so much stuff going on. And then also being a mindful plant parent, where I have like more sensitive plants, and I want to engage with them on a daily basis. And I feel like I've been oscillating between these two different plant parent personalities. And P.S. if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a plant parent personality test on my website. There's five different personality archetypes. You take the test for free, you get your plant parent personality profile, you can take it at uh, growingjoywithmaria.com slash personality we'll put in the show notes if you're curious. But anyway, I don't want to oscillate as much. I don't want to be in extremes anymore this year. I've lived in a lot of extremes with my plants <laughs> in the last couple of years. So I want to find more of a sustainable way to be engaging with my plants on a daily and or weekly basis that doesn't feel grueling or overwhelming. So I this year really doubled down on my morning wellness routine, my meditation, my workouts, all of that. I really want to build my plant care into my morning routine in a mindful way. The book Deep Work talks about habit stacking. Habit stacking is when you basically put a couple of different habits back to back. So it's like when I wake up, I have to go downstairs and make coffee. After my coffee, I have to step outside and thank my trees. After that, I go inside, I sit on my couch, I do my meditation, I do my journaling, and I just like do these things back to back. That's like kind of what habit stacking is. So I want to add interacting with a plant every morning back into my morning routine. So I think just creating like making plants part of my morning routine, I think will be really nice. And then also lately in the last month, I found that taking like little three minute work breaks throughout the day, especially before or after my lunch break have been really nice because obviously I'm going to get up to go downstairs to have lunch. So on my way back, can I water a couple of plants, go take three deep breaths next to one of my plants, touch my plants, just do something, you know, stand outside with my feet on the ground, just like get back into nature, regulate my nervous system with one of my plants or, or outdoors in my garden. So how can I just like add little planty mindful moments on a routine basis in a sustainable way to things that I'm already doing. That's why I like that lunch break, because that's something that I'm going to do every day, no matter what. So yeah, I'm just trying to focus on like, how can I just like be a little bit more even keeled when it comes to my plant care and not either like, totally busy ignoring my plants or totally hovering and like obsessing over my plants. And then last but not least, and I think this is my biggest goal, it's not tangible. It's not like a goal that you achieve, really. It's not like I want 10 plants this year, you know, I want to reconnect with the essence, like the spirit of first year plant parent Maria. I've been caring for plants now for seven or eight years. I know how to care for them. I know how to water them. I know how to help them thrive. Like I've been doing this podcast for a while. And with that knowledge, I've noticed that like some of the original butterflies have gone away from caring for my plants. It's not that I don't find so much joy with my plants, but I just remember that first year of plant parenthood when everything was new, the first time I pruned a plant and it grew bushier, the first time I saw my monstera leaf unfurl, the first time I got a fenestrated leaf on my monstera, the first time my begonia bloomed for me. It was this year of first that literally like had me feeling like my heart was jumping out of my skin. It was so exciting. It was so joyful. And now I haven't had a lot of firsts lately because I've cared for plants for a long time. So I want to try and reconnect with that first year plant parent Maria. And I'm going to do this by trying some new plant varieties. This month, we're going to have an episode on alocasia. I've been experimenting with alocasia recently. I want to try and grow some new plant genus that I haven't grown before. I've gotten really simple with my plant collection of just being a lot of like philodendrons, monstera and snake plants. I'm really going to expand my plant collection in a unique way that's going to push me to have some firsts again, even if the firsts are, oh my God, you know, I have a calathea that goes limp on me every three days, right? Because I haven't figured out quite what her exact perfect watering schedule is. And calathea are much more finicky plants than everything else. But I'm having so much fun communicating with her and figuring it out. And like, when I do water her and she perks back up, it feels so good. And I, I feel like that first year plant parent again, and it's the greatest feeling. And so I'm trying to just figure out, okay, 
what are some new things that I can try and do that's going to try and capture that that first time plant parent. I feel it when, you know, I got a baby bird this year, Frankie. I feel it with Frankie because I'm a first time bird mom. So everything is new. I have to figure out and Google everything. And it's so exciting. And so I want to try some new stuff. I might try new growing media. I might try new crafts, you know, plant crafts that I've never done before. But I'm really excited. I'm really excited to just like connect to that inner you know, your inner child or your inner newbie plant parent. And I will definitely keep you all posted on this podcast and on social media on Instagram and TikTok with what little projects I'm doing and what I'm learning from them. So this is like a shorter episode for the week, but that's it, you know, so take a good look, reflect on 2023, listen to the plan audit episode, then decide what are you bringing into 2024? How are you going to be able to do it sustainably? Write your goals down share them with me if you want on socials. I'm so excited. We have such amazing content lined up for you guys. Please make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. These episodes that we have coming up are so good. I'm so excited where every month we're going to bring you one houseplant episode, one gardening episode, one wellness through the lens of nature episode, and then one kind of jump ball. So sometimes we'll do a second houseplant episode. Sometimes we'll do a second gardening episode. But I have such amazing guests coming. We're diving into such deep topics. I truly listen to all of your requests. If you have a request for an episode, please write me, DM me, call me, beat me if you want to reach me. I want your input. I'm making this show for you. So I want to hear what you want and what you need and how I can help you keep growing joy. Plant friend, thank you for tuning in today. It means so much to me that I get to be part of your planty journey. If you like what you heard, make sure you're subscribed to the show so you never miss an episode. We have so many incredible interviews and solo episodes on incredible houseplant and gardening topics that you will not want to miss this year. And while you're over there in the podcast player subscribing, why don't you click over to the review section of Growing Joy with Plants and leave us a review. Reviews are tremendously helpful for the growth of the podcast, so thanks in advance. If you're looking for more opportunities to grow as a plant parent with Growing Joy content, we've got so many options for you. First, I highly recommend you taking the plant parent personality test. It's free. It's super fun. It takes three minutes to complete. At the end of the test, you're going to get your plant parent personality profile and a curated list of plants, projects, and podcast episodes that are right up your alley, tailored just for you and your lifestyle inspired by your results. The links are in the show notes. If you're looking to uplevel your plant parent game, I have so many free downloads on my website that I think could help you, like the Understanding Natural Light download or nine different ways to green up your office space. If you'd like to support the show monetarily and help me bring the show to as many people as possible for free, you can head to our Patreon link in the show notes to learn more about our offerings. And finally, I invite you to come hang out with me and continue the planty conversation on social media, on Instagram and TikTok. I'm growing joy with Maria. My DMs are always open if you have requests for topics or ideas for the show. Thank you again for listening. It is truly my honor and delight to help you keep blooming and keep growing joy.